Hi, I'm Bob Stern. I'm professor of geosciences at the University of Texas at Dallas. Today I want to talk to you about an interesting problem in igneous petrology. My talk is about A-type granites, buried crust of the central United States, and similar rocks that are exposed much better around the margins of the Red Sea in Northeast Africa and Arabia. The title of this presentation is The Northern Arabo-Nubian Felsic Large Igneous Province, an Ediacaran analog for the mid-continent granite rhyolite province. Some brief explanations about A-type granite, mesoproterozoic, Ediacaran, large igneous province, and mid-continent granite rhyolite province may be useful. A-type granitic melts are anhydrous, rich in alkali feldspar, and form in anorogenic or intraplate tectonic settings. They are sometimes thought to be associated with continental rifting. The Mesoproterozoic era began 1,600 million years ago and ended 600 million years later when the Neoproterozoic era began. The Mesoproterozoic was different in many ways from the modern plate tectonic era, including being a time when a lot of A-type granites and rhyolites were emplaced and erupted. The Ediacaran is the last of three Neoproterozoic periods. A large igneous province, or lip, is a magmatic province that covers more than 100,000 square kilometers and was in place during less than 50 million years in an intraplate tectonic setting. There are seven kinds of lips, including silicic lips, which is the type of lip we are interested in here. Finally, the mid-continent rhyolite province underlies much of the southern and central Great Plains region of the United States. We can usefully describe this as a lip. It encompasses about a million square kilometers, or maybe two closely associated lips, one associated with about 1.47 billion year old eastern granite rhyolite province, the other associated with about 1.37 billion year old southern granite rhyolite province. Here in Manhattan, Kansas, we're a little north of the southern granite rhyolite province, which is deeply buried beneath Paleozoic sediments. Almost all of the mid-continent rhyolite granite province is buried beneath Paleozoic and younger sediments, and it's mostly known from oil well cuttings. One of the best places where you can directly examine granite rhyolite province crust is in the Ozark uplift of southeast Missouri. Here, several plutons with A-type, I-type, and even S-type affinities intrude mostly high silica rhyolitic volcanics. The abundance of A-type felsic igneous rocks in particular makes it difficult to compare the southern granite rhyolite province with Phanerozoic convergent margin suites like the Sierra Nevada batholith of California, which is dominated by I-type granitic bodies. To advance our understanding of the mostly buried Mesoproterozoic granite rhyolite province, it may be worthwhile considering a better exposed analog, namely Ediacaran igneous rocks exposed by mid-Cenozoic rifting to form the Red Sea. Neogene uplift and erosion has stripped off Phanerozoic sedimentary cover and exposed this crust continuously for about 1,500 kilometers on either side of the Red Sea. The extreme desert climate of this region means that there is little soil or vegetation to obscure the rocks. Anyone can use Google Earth to examine these rocks. Of course, field and laboratory investigations are essential in order to understand how to best interpret them, but an excellent example can be seen around Mount Sinai, or Gebel Musa as Muslims call it, this is where God gave Moses a stone tablet inscribed with the Ten Commandments. Some petrologists suggest that perhaps 
the stone tablet was a slab of unusual graphic granite. Exposures of basement rocks around the Red Sea are known as the Arabian Nubian Shield. And this crust formed over about 250 million years in Neoproterozoic time. Ediacaran igneous rocks of the Arabian Nubian Shield are the final products of a Wilson cycle that began 800 or 900 million years ago, with rifting to open the Mozambique Ocean, followed by formation of new subduction zones and island arcs, ultimately leading to collision between large fragments of eastern and western Gondwana to form the supercontinent Greater Gondwana or Panosha. Collision happened about 630 million years ago, forming the East African origin, of which the Arabian Nubian Shield is the northernmost portion. Post-collisional processes, including formation of the Ediacaran igneous rocks that we are interested in, continued until the crust stabilized and was deeply eroded to form the Great Unconformity, best exposed in Jordan and Saudi Arabia. Ediacaran igneous rocks are concentrated in the northern part of the Arabian Nubian Shield, but isolated plutons are found in the south, in Ethiopia and Yemen. The best studied tract of these rocks is the approximately 100,000 square kilometers of basement exposed in the southern Sinai Peninsula. Here, study of 24 plutons show that these range in age from 635 to 578 million years old, with older calcalkalin I-types being followed by younger A-type granites. The A-type granites stand out, making distinctive granitic outcrops that form the highest peaks in the region. They typically have sharp intrusive contacts, testifying to their anhydrous composition and shallow emplacement. Some of these rocks are extremely attractive with deep red color reflecting the abundance of pink to red K feldspar. This evolution in magma compositions took about 60 million years to accomplish and it can be seen in modal rock classification diagrams. Magma evolution can also be seen in trace element geochemical diagrams for example, niobium versus yttrium, where early I-types plot in the field for volcanic arc granites, whereas later A-types plot towards or in the field of within plate granite. Chondrite normalized rare earth element plots reveal the increasing role that feldspar fractionation played in controlling magma evolution from early I-types with modest negative europium anomalies to later A-types with deep negative europium anomalies. Fractional crystallization of more primitive mafic melts can't be the only important process because we see very unusual rare earth patterns with great enrichments in the rare earth elements, up to 1,000 times chondritic abundances, and patterns with heavy rare earth element enrichment. These enrichments may reflect an important role for fluorine-rich fluids in magma evolution. There may be some economic potential for rare earth element deposits in some of these intrusions. Another important clue about how Ediacaran felsic magmas of the Arabian Nubian Shield formed comes from oxygen and neodymium isotopes. Oxygen isotopic compositions of zircons are robust indicators of magma sources, with high values of del 18 o indicating sediment and crust remelting, and low values, about plus 4.7 to plus 5.9 per mil, indicating derivation from the mantle. Ediacaran igneous rocks, in particular, show light oxygen isotopic compositions, indicating that many of these melts originated in the mantle. Neodymium isotopic compositions confirm this conclusion. These igneous rocks were derived from a depleted mantle source. These isotopic compositions yield neodymium model ages that are a few hundred million years older than their crystallization ages, 
perhaps indicating derivation of these magmas from partial melting of Arabian Nubian shield lithospheric mantle. Whatever was the nature of the Ediacaran granite magma source, it couldn't have resulted from direct melting of the mantle. Silica-rich melts like these cannot coexist with mantle olivine. Instead, there must have been a two-stage process to form these granitic magmas. First, the mantle melted to generate mafic magmas, which either crystallized and were remelted in the lower crust or fractionated to generate these felsic melts. Which of these processes was responsible? We can use refraction seismology to look at the lower crust beneath the Arabian Nubian shield. This reveals that this lower crust has P wave velocities of 6.6 .6 to 7.8 kilometers per second, indicating an overall mafic composition. We also have some xenoliths from this lower crust brought to the surface by neogene basalt eruptions. These indicate that the mafic lower crust of Arabia is rich in plagioclase and pyroxene. These xenoliths have textures that look more like igneous cumulates than residues after partial melting. These xenoliths have not been dated, so we cannot be sure that they are related to Ediacaran felsic magmas or to older Neoproterozoic crust, but the results that we have support a model whereby the Ediacaran felsic lip of the Arabian Nubian shield is the surface manifestation of a much larger mafic lip, which is now hidden in the lower crust. What might have caused the Ediacaran felsic lip and its hidden mafic precursor? An interesting possibility is that the region experienced a major episode of lithospheric delamination following the collision between East and West Gondwana at the beginning of Ediacaran time. Crust and lithosphere was thickened by the collision leading to the loss of the dense lithospheric root and allowing underlying asthenosphere to rise into the void and melt, producing mafic magmas that underplated the lower crust and evolved to form the early Ediacaran granites. The loss of a lithospheric root led to uplift and erosion with continued mafic underplating and fractionation to form younger Ediacaran granites. Over about 60 million years, the lithosphere cooled and thickened to about 100 kilometers thick, shutting down mantle melting and allowing the crust to stabilize or cratinize. This is when the great unconformity was cut, followed by deposition of thick Cambro-Ordovician sandstones. These sandstones are the rocks that the Nabataean city of Petra was carved out of during the days of the Ropan Empire. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation about the Ediacaran granitic rocks of the Arabian Nubian Shield and what these might tell us about how the more deeply hidden Mesoproterozoic granitic rocks of the southern and eastern granite rhyolite province might have formed. I look forward to learning what new research reveals about both of these fascinating provinces.